Let's take a look at a quick way you can find the vertical asymptotes for cotangent graphs if you're given an equation. So all you have to do is apply the horizontal transformations to the vertical asymptotes of your parent graph y equals cotangent x. So the horizontal transformations are simply the inputs of the cotangent function found there in the parentheses and in teal it's that bx minus c. So that's the first part and you'll just set those equal to your parent asymptotes of cotangent x. Check out that graph uh, with an online calculator or with your own graphing calculator if needed if you aren't familiar with this graph but know that they do happen at 0 plus pi k. And we'll talk more in detail on that in a minute. But all you have to do is set those two things equal to each other and then solve for x. And you'll get an equation that will give you every single asymptote for your specific graph or equation. So that k is an integer, and depending on what integer you substitute in, you'll get a different asymptote along the way. And we'll talk about this more. Let's look at a specific example. All right, so let's say we wanted to find the asymptotes of this equation, y equals negative 2 cotangent of pi x plus 1 plus 1. So all we need to do here, first identify the inputs of the cotangent function. Those are your horizontal transformations. So that's everything right here. That's our first part. So pi times x plus 1, copy it exactly. And we set that equal to the parent cotangent asymptotes. So they happen at 0 plus pi k. And now we just need to solve for x. So the first thing we'll do is divide both sides by pi. Make sure when you do this, you divide every single term by pi. So I like to show it like this. Okay, on the left side, you're left with x plus 1. Of course, 0 divided by pi is 0. And then pi k divided by pi is just going to be 1k or even just k. Simple enough last step, let's subtract 1 from both sides. And we can only subtract the 1 from the 0 on the right side because it's not a like term with that 1k term. So we're going to get an asymptote generating equation that's x equals negative 1 plus k. This equation right here shows you every single asymptote for the graph. It's a neat way to represent all of them. And now to help you better understand k, let's just substitute in a couple values here so you can get specific asymptotes that you'll find when you graph this. So I like to let k equal 0 first. That's usually the most obvious case. Uh, showing it out, of course, we have x equals negative 1 plus 0 plugged in for k. So we know we have an asymptote at x equals negative 1. And this trick is really helpful if you're just finding the asymptotes, of course, but if you're trying to graph this equation, which I'll do in a later video, so check that out. I'll put a link to a playlist that'll have that eventually. Um, but it's nice to know that you should find an asymptote there so you can double check your final graph. All right, let's do when k equals one. Okay, simple enough simplifying here. We have negative one plus one substituted in for k. So we'd expect another asymptote here at x equals zero. And finally, let's sub in k equals negative 1. Of course, you can do this with all the integers k, infinitely many. We have x equals negative 1 plus negative 1. So we should see another asymptote at x equals negative 2. Notice that these are spaced apart by one unit. So negative 1 to 0 is one unit, or negative 1 to negative 2. And that's because our period is actually 1. If you calculate the period for cotangent, remember it's pi divided by b, and b is this pi right here, so your period is actually 1. And that should make sense. Every asymptote for a cotangent graph happens once a period, or every one unit in this case. So I did go ahead and sketch this graph out, and like I said, I'll post a video that explains fully how to graph this later on. But here's this graph and what it looks like. There's that asymptote generating equation, again, if you need it. But I think this visual really helps. So we found k equals 0 asymptote right here. That was x equals negative 1. When k was negative 1, we got that x equals negative 2 asymptote. Here's the k is 1 at x equals 0. And I think this really just helps you see they are one unit apart. And you can even extend 
you substitute in k equals 2 to that asymptotes equation, of course you get x equals 1, k equals 3, you'll get x equals 2. So this just really helps bring everything together. All right, that's all we have. So hopefully this helped you feel really confident in finding the vertical asymptotes for any cotangent equation. Um, and hopefully it helped you better understand that term K. Thanks so much for watching.